fantastic conversation we'll be having as we coast home right here on News Up, showing live on Silver Television, Silver News 24. We're talking the waste management crisis that we have and how we can devise creative solutions to solving uh, this problem that a whole lot of countries are talking about even the conversation that he had uh, just at the Climate Change Summit that held in Kenya. Taiwo Adewale, a waste management expert, is here to give us his perspective and offer uh, solutions to this issue. Good morning. Happy Barika Dasala. I think I should say happy Barika Dasala to, <laughs> to you and to all our Muslim faithful out there. The first thing that came to my mind when this issue of waste management topic came to, to uh, when I saw it was like, in this current economy, are people still generating waste? I mean, what have you observed so far? Yeah, people are still generating waste. For instance, in Nigeria, Nigeria generates about 32 million tons of waste every year. And out of these 32 million generated, collection is just between 20 to 30 percent, which means remains 80 to 70 percent. And if they're not in the drainage, the rainy season is there anytime it rains, you see flooding here and there. And uh, some people find it easy that anytime it is raining, that is when they remember to bring out their waste, that, that the rain will take it away. But where is the rain taking it to? Mm -hmm. Now the, the waste find their way into the drainage, from the drainage, now into the ocean. Do you know most of the fishes you consume now contain microplastics? And this is coming from the waste. Mm -hmm. So, but in a nutshell, if you try to put a monetary value on that, for instance, if you break it down, Nigeria generates about 100,000 tons of waste every single day. If you're able to manage this waste very well, be able to separate your plastic, your nylon, that will give us about four billion naira every single day. And if you narrow it down to Lagos State, where Lagos State generates about 13,000 tons of waste every day, that will give us about 52 million naira every single day from the waste which we generate and just straight away. So if you're able to manage your waste very well, your organic waste separate, your plastic, your nylon, and put monetary value on that, so you can imagine 54 million naira every single day. If they are not in the drainage, they are in the dump site or on the road. So officially, we are wasting money. Exactly. Did, did you hear the amount of money that people are throwing inside the gutters and, well, and, and being well, ended up in there? Unfortunately, some people are making money out of this money you think is being thrown away. I talked about um, non-degradables and um, what people are doing with non-degradables. Some people are making money off it. It is incentivized by certain quarters. Talk to us. Let's look at government and uh, because we've had this conversation we've been talking about this for heaven knows how long how we can uh, maximize the potentials from non-degradables what have you seen from government in terms of attention to waste management in lagos uh, well let's let's let me sign it to lagos state yeah definitely in nigeria there's a law we have what we call the uh, waste management policy there's a law that made it mandatory that everybody that generates waste should try as much as possible to separate and bag your waste. And I give you a very good example. We have what we call the informal waste pickers. Yeah. These are the guys that go out every single day. They come to your dustbin, they open it, and you see them picking one material or the other. All those stuff that are picking are recyclable. So, but the law make it mandatory, segregate your waste, separate your waste. And for instance, Lagos State came up with what they call Lagos Recycle, trying to make sure okay, every household you don't need to have four, five, six dust being like what you do at Brelez, even start with two. You have the blue for your recyclables, while the green is for your general waste. So the PSP will come and pick the green, while the blue is where you have your recyclables. And I give a very good example. If you look at those informal waste pickers, they come to your house. For those that don't want to patronize the PSP, once they come to your house, you give them maybe 200 naira, they pick your waste. But nobody asks them, where are you taking the waste to? Yeah. All I know is my environment. So they come to your house, you pay them 200 naira, they collect that waste from you, they go to where they call the aggregation center, they sit down, remove all the plastic, remove all the nylon, and sell. So you can see that making double money, you pay them 200 naira. So the item collected from you, they separate the plastic. For instance, like a kilogram of plastic is selling for around 50 to 70 naira. For those aluminum cans, it's going as far as 800 naira per kilogram. Your nylon, your pelter sachet is going as far as 100 naira per kilogram. So you can imagine by the time you pay in 200 naira, you sit down and separate those items and see sell them. And we have industry, we have the Chinese, the Indian, and the Lebanese that are requesting for this material every single day because this is what they use in their factory. For instance, the plastic bottles, they use them in producing carpet, your pillow, your mattress are produced from those plastic bottles. And even for the women, your synthetic weave one is produced from those plastic bottles. The Chinese are doing that already. Your aluminum can to produce your roofing sheets, your pot and so on. And these are items we generate every single day and dispose. 
I, I'm always angry whenever I drive on the road. You see people after consuming these items from their car, they throw them mm. away. So there's even a need for behavioral change. I remember talking to one of the drivers. He said, oh, if I don't throw away the waste, how will the woman, the loma woman, mm. have the road to sweep? So you can see people mentality. mentality. So there's a need for attitudinal change and let people know there's value attached to it. There's this saying normally tell people, don't waste your waste. What you actually call waste are no waste, but there are resources for other people. And the foreigners are not even taking advantage. The Chinese, the, in fact, you go to most of the dumps and I see the Chinese in the Australian car going around with the waste picker. I want to buy your plastic, I want to buy your nylon and so on. And they produce items which they bring back to us to still sell back to us. Mm. This is very interesting because I was in a conversation with um, packaging experts in West Africa. And I was alarmed when one of them said um, their secondary raw materials, which is shattered glass, broken yes. glass, that they import it. And I, my mouth was left open for, for a few minutes. And I asked myself a question. We have enough glasses in Nigeria. Exactly. I mean, from the drinks, from the alcohol, where do they get to end up? It means people really have not come to understand the value of, I don't want to call it waste anymore, because it's, <laughs> when you call it waste, people think, okay, waste, throw it away. Exactly. Secondary raw materials. Yeah. Help people understand the value of their waste and how they should henceforth handle their waste of different materials, you know, and how they should, they should, they should fix it well. Because when you mention this green and red, um, um, what's yes. it called? I, I have no idea. I can tell you that for free. Forgive me. Yeah, like, like what Lagos said did was to even start with a, a nylon bag. They have the purple bag and the black bag. So the black bag is meant for your general waste. Why that purple bag is meant for your recycling? What do you mean so, by general waste, please? Now we talk about your kitchen waste. Degradables. Degradables. Goes in there. And even for the degradables, the, the there's a factory around the Kuroduna that pick all these degradables and produce comp compost for farmer. And the last time I was there, they do about almost 3,000 bags every single day. They go to some of these markets to get this waste. And we even have people that develop technology whereby they convert this to gas. They produce gas. Organic, within seven days, it decomposes and they trap the gas and use for your cooking. If you go to most of these developing countries, right from their kitchen, as soon as they generate their waste, they have like a mini bag that just where they put the waste and they generate the gas to run their kitchen. So, Talking of high cost of gas, they are not even involved because right from their kitchen, their waste they give them the waste. gas. And the sediments you use as compost for their farming. So you can see we are working toward what I call zero waste. Mm. And now we are talking about circular economy. We are moving mm. from linear economy to circular, but everything is put back mm. into the system. And like I said earlier on, what I tell people, don't waste your waste. Waste is not waste on, until it is being wasted. <laughs> Sounds very interesting. <laughs> waste is not waste as, until it has been wasted. Exactly. You talked about the different colors of, of, of beans. Don't use the word waste anymore. <laughs> uh, different colors of beans. Uh, beans, yeah, B I N S, yes. uh, that's out there. And you begin to understand that that sounds very elitist. When I travel to uh, uh, somewhere in Jarabadia, or I go to somewhere in Namukuku, or in uh, Jarabi, through the local government areas, we don't see that um, separation going on. So how can government have an all-inclusive, because it's about all-inclusive maximization of our, of our waste here? Yeah, thank you. If I was, at, I was at that era yesterday because I've come up with what they call the collection center, whereby every household will be able to bring their recyclables and get cash in return. So what we try to do is to give incentive, because if you look at Lagos State, 70% of the waste is coming from the low-income area. Yes. And most of these people will tell you, when I don't have money to feed, you want me to go and buy a bin of 43,000 and so on. So what we try to do is try to encourage them that, look, separate your waste. We even come to your doorstep to pick them up. As soon as we are picking them up, we are giving cash in turn. And like I keep on telling people, a time we come in Lagos, those PSP trucks will go around. They will be able to send any waste to pick anyone because everybody must have separated their waste. And as soon as I come into your house, please, I don't have waste. What I have is materials. Do you want to buy my plastic? Do you want to buy my nylon? Do you want to buy my organic waste? So people will start trading their waste. So instead of you paying, you are even the one getting uh, yes. cash back. At the time you call, you stand in the public drinking water, you see people hanging around you, for just you for you to drop your plastic and quickly pick. That will be the first to pick it up. So what Lagos State is trying to do is to put infrastructure in place, bringing recycling closer to people. You don't have to travel far. I have a station where somebody is calling me. I'm calling from Badagri. I have some plastic for you. And why my location is VI? So you look at cost of transporting, 
the plastic audio from Badagri to Ikoi, and by the time you bring it, the plastic, maybe the value is just 5,000 naira, but cost of transportation. So what I try to do is bring it closer to people. You don't need to travel far. In fact, right on your street, yeah, whereby you exchange your, your recyclables and get cash return. So what Lagos City is trying to do is bring it recycling closer to people. Every local government, even down to every ward, mm -hmm. I take it there and get cash return. And at the end of the day, what we call a zero community. Hmm. You mentioned earlier on that the people within certain areas, um, the low income areas, actually generate more waste. 70 percent of the waste. Exactly. It, 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 someone would think the lower you earn, the less waste you should produce. But it seems to be the other way around this time around. Um, let, let us understand why that is happening. And if, because of the climate change issue that's going on, if some sort of responsibility should be dropped on the doorstep of the manufacturers who have chosen to, because of the economy, bring about pocket-sized you know, goods so that the people in low-income communities can, take can also um, afford the yeah. product. So if there's some sort of responsibility or ta extra taxation that should be dropped on the desk of these manufacturers so that at least they can find other you know, creative ways of managing this issue yeah, for the for the manufacturer there's what we call there's a policy called the epl extended producer responsibility so the producers to they have a responsibility to play and i can remember some weeks ago we met with some of the manufacturers especially the plastic bottles and if you notice nowadays there's this particular brand every time you pick up their bottle there's something written on the bottle mm. recycle mm. and there's one of them recently that changed the color of the bottle from green to transparent one because they are not trying to move towards recyclables. Mm. So the producer actually they have a lot of role to play, but the issue is that how many people read? Most people don't read, you immediately get your water, you don't drink, but if you notice every single bottle you pick, there's always a sign. Recycle or dispose responsibly, but nobody pay attention, people just consume and throw away. So but now we are talking to the producer, let's work with the collectors, let's work with the informal sector, let's see how we could formalize them because for instance, like in Lagos State, with activity of the catfish, they banned them. Mm. But some of them, in fact, 80% of recyclable in Lagos State is done by those people. So what we're trying to do is, how can we formalize these people? How can we engage them? How can we give them an identity? Mm. Which area are you operating? You have your ID card, you know where you operate. So there are some places the PSP truck cannot get to. But with these people, once they are registered, we attach to recycler. They're able to go from door to door and pick down. When you look at the low income area, in most cases, whenever there's party, you see them, every gift item they share, they want to collect, they want to get food and so on. And most of these people, they don't pay. They hardly pay for that. So that's why you see the PSP complaining, oh, if I go to Ajegunle, they don't pay. Because people find it easy that anytime it is raining, I can easily bring out my waste and the rain will take it away. Why do I have to pay? But what we are trying to design is to have this behavioral change. Mm. That you know you can even make money from your waste, your nylon. For instance, in Nigeria now, we generate about one million, in fact, less than 10, I mean, about 10 million pure water sachet every single day. Because people consume these items, immediately they consume, they trade them away. But these are raw material that people are requesting for every single day that we can't even meet up with the request. Mm. You, you know, this conversation could be a lot deeper than it is right now. And um, obviously, we cannot exhaust it within this period of time uh, that we have. You've established the fact that there is a need for a total mind change of exactly. the Nigerian people, what, how they should treat their waste. Exactly. But then, you can also agree with me that the PSP initiative has not really succeeded in Lagos, uh, given to many, many issues. So it is um, a, a combination of what government should do and what the people should also be doing for themselves. You know, we'll stay on this conversation for the future. Thank you so very much, uh, Taiwo Adewale. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure having you come talk to us. Thank on, you. on this program. We have to go right now. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Yeah.